The Three Gorges Dam and the South to North Water Transfer Project are two of the Chinese Communist Party's major operational water resource projects. The construction of the Three Gorges Dam sparked heated debates among Chinese scholars in the 1980s and 1990s. But in 2000, the South to North Water Transfer Project, which is 2.5 times larger than the Three Gorges Project, was launched amidst a wave of silence. Chinese officials claim that the project will send the abundant water resources from the rivers in southern China to the water-starved north and northwest, thus changing the situation of frequent floods in the south and droughts and severe water shortages in the north. The project runs through four major river basins in China, namely the Yangtze, Huai, Yellow, and Hai rivers, and the total investment is estimated to be over 77.2 billion U.S. dollars. The project consists of three water lines, east, central, and west, making it the largest long-distance water transfer project in the world, with a total construction time of 50 years. The east and central lines were open to transfer water in December 2014. As recently reported by the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP's media, in the seven years since it was fully commissioned, Nearly 50 billion cubic meters of water has been transferred to the north, benefiting 140 million people and optimizing the economic development of more than 40 large and medium-sized cities. Guarantee rate of domestic and industrial water supply has been raised from less than 80 percent to over 97 percent in benefited cities along the eastern route. The rate of domestic water supply in those by the middle route has been elevated from less than 75 percent to more than 95 percent, and the rate of industrial water supply has been up to over 90 percent. In fact, it's an illusion created by the Chinese government. Even before the project is completed, it has shown that its potential damages are even worse than those of the Three Gorges project. Let's start with a simple example. To safeguard the Three Gorges Dam, only one place needs to be watched carefully. China State Council issued security regulations and deployed thousands of armed police with advanced weapons to guard the Three Gorges Dam. The South to North Water Transfer Project, on the other hand, is several thousand kilometers long. For example, the Central Main Canal is over 1,000 kilometers long, like an elevated bridge. It's a hanging river in the Central Plains. In the event of a canal collapse, the consequences would be more serious than the Yellow River breaking its banks during the flood. In 2001, when Beijing won the right to host the 2008 Olympic Games, Jiang Zemin, the then CCP leader, who loved vanity projects, hastily launched the South to North Water Transfer Project in the name of providing clean water for the Beijing Olympics. It wasn't until six years later, in October 2008, that China's State Council approved the General Report on the Feasibility Study for the first phase of the South to North Water Transfer Project. In other words, no feasibility study had ever been done for this mega-project when it was decided in 2001. Why then did Chinese water experts barely raise their objections? In the Three Gorges project, the experts who signed the report in agreement became academicians of the Chinese Academy of Engineering and the Academy of Sciences, while nine of the experts who didn't sign the report didn't become academicians. Chinese scholars have learned to keep their mouths shut from their experience with the controversy of the Three Gorges project. Most of the rivers in China flow from west to east. This is because the topography of China's mountains and rivers is high in the northwest and low in the southeast. The South to North Water Transfer Project has modified the direction of water flow. Instead of flowing to the lower part of the river, the water is sent to the higher part. The cost of this counter-terrain project is very high. Let's look at the eastern route first. At its source, it has installed the world's largest group of pumping stations to raise water. That is, by means of 13-step pumping stations, water is raised from 2 meters above sea level to 45 meters, the equivalent of climbing 13 steps. 
The water from the lower reaches of the Yangtze River is thus brought into the Shandong province of China. Next is the Central Line. The construction of the Central Line began in central China, where gates are built to divert the water into a man-made canal. The water is escorted to the capital, Beijing, by the world's largest cluster of aqueducts. This aqueduct is about 10 kilometers long. The water transported by the aqueduct flows very high above the ground. One is because there is a drop of nearly 100 meters between the reservoir and Beijing. The second is that there are three local rivers underneath the aqueduct. The elevated water flow needs to avoid intersection with the three rivers on the ground to ensure the independence of the aqueduct. In addition to this large-sized aqueduct, there are 26 other large ones in the central line. To prevent leakage or deformation, the management office needs 24-hour monitoring and manual surveillance. We've enhanced observation of water temperature, velocity and flow, as well as the patrol and inspection of the project during the freezing period. We will give an early warning in case of any danger. In addition, 104 ice booms and 295 sets of ice melting and blocking equipment have been set up to ensure safe and smooth operation of the project during the ice season. The western route of this project is still on paper. The plan is to transfer water from the upper reaches of the Yangtze River to the upper reaches of the Yellow River. The difficulty is too great as it requires passing through very dangerous mountains and digging water tunnels. The South to North Water Transfer Project, which is now in operation and under construction, is officially reported to have cost 77.2 billion US dollars, but the real cost will never be known. More importantly, it's not the end point for spending money. The central government has provided only less than 6.3 billion US dollars for the project. The rest, at least over 70 billion US dollars, came from bank loans and construction funds, which are supposed to be repaid by the proceeds of water sales. Bank loans are from ordinary people's savings accounts. If the water usage of the project doesn't meet projections, it means that the banks will incur many bad debts and it becomes questionable if people can recover their deposits at the bank. So will the project break even in a reasonable period of time? Unlikely. In December 2014, China's National Development and Reform Commission announced the price of water supply for the Central Line project. It revealed the average annual net revenue from water sales was 1 billion US dollars or 2.5 percent of the investment. That is, it will take about 30 to 40 years to recover the investment. But there are reasons to doubt if the project will safely survive these few decades. The project plan calls for an average of 18.5 billion cubic meters of water to be transferred each year from the east and central lines, which should total about 130 billion cubic meters over seven years. According to recent official data, the cumulative transfer of water to the north is nearly 50 billion cubic meters. In other words, only 38% of the target has been achieved. This is based on the official data. As data falsification is serious in China, the actual percentage can be lower. So why has the project failed to achieve the expected results? According to Wang Wei Luo, a Chinese water expert living in Germany, at the beginning of the project, local governments along the route thought that the water was free to use so they provided a high quota. As a result, the project planned the capacity to transfer 18.5 billion cubic meters of water per year. But it turned out the central government required the local areas to pay for the water. Moreover, local governments need to build facilities to connect the water to the water supply networks so the cost to end users becomes very high. According to the Water Resources Bulletin of Shandong Province, the price of water from the South to North Water Transfer Project is about 95 US cents per cubic meter, while the price of local surface water and groundwater is between 5 and 10 US cents per cubic meter. As a result, many local governments say that the cost of water is too high and that they don't need as much water as they did in the original plan. There is another important reason that local governments don't dare to say directly. The water from this project isn't desirable because it's very polluted and the water quality is poor. 
Water resources in China have been polluted extensively. In October 2016, the School of Environmental Studies at Tsinghua University in Beijing released a report on water research, which collected water samples from 44 cities in 23 provinces in China, and all of them were found to be at high risk of carcinogenic substances. In the South to North Water Transfer Project, water quality was surprisingly poor at some key points because of the lack of collaboration between cities in China's corrupt and inefficient government system. The local government is only concerned with the development of the local economy and the welfare of other cities isn't their concern. For example, the Central Line project starts at the Dianjiangko Reservoir in Henan Province, which connects to the Han River. The upper reaches of the Han River are in Shiryan, an industrial city in Hubei Province. The Shending River, which connects to the Han River, is the discharge point for the city's sewage plant, and the black sewage is discharged almost directly into the Shending River, with little or no treatment and a pungent smell. The river is listed in the Shiryan city record as having poor Category 5 water quality. That standard doesn't even meet the standards for agricultural irrigation and landscape water. Local villagers say they don't even dare to touch the river water. Their feet will itch for days as long as they step into the river. Now the polluted water flows into the Han River and is delivered to Beijing. The Han River has another tributary from a county in Shanxi province. This county has more than 300,000 people whose domestic and production sewage also enters the Han River. And the locals call this tributary a natural septic tank. The water from the septic tank also ends up in Beijing. There are now several cancer villages in the Han River Basin. There are reportedly close to 500 cancer villages in mainland China. The most well-known cancer villages in China are in the Huai River Basin. Since the 1980s, various tanneries, paper mills, glass factories, and fertilizer plants have been built in the area, discharging large amounts of sewage directly into the river. It was reported in the media that around 2013, up to 200 people in a village of fewer than 1,000 people had cancer. A team of researchers from China's National Center for Disease Control and Prevention confirmed a direct link between high cancer rates and water pollution. Despite the Chinese government's claims to have invested in the Huai River, its actual effectiveness has been questioned by the public. The Huai River intersects with the eastern route of the South to North Water Transfer Project, which is connected by a canal and forms part of the eastern route. As early as 2006, the Huai River Water Resources Protection Scientific Research Institute predicted that the eastern route project could cause rapid deterioration of water quality in the trunk line and serious water pollution incidents. As a result, many cities have tried to reduce the amount of water they receive from this major project. The city of Tianjin, next to Beijing, rejected the water from the South to North Water Transfer Project outright, preferring to use desalinated water. The South to North Water Transfer Project itself has also caused great damage to the natural environment. According to Wang Wei Luo, the main canal of the Central Line Project has built more than 200 projects across large and medium-sized rivers. Hundreds of natural rivers have been interrupted by this main canal and have disappeared. In its natural state, before the South to North water transfer project was built, there were more than 800 natural rivers flowing from west to east. But after the South to North water transfer trunk canal was built, only 200 rivers remained. In his opinion, the 2021 flood in Zhengzhou City was not only due to the release of water from the reservoir, but also due to the consequences of the water transfer project. The area where the rivers disappeared is either used as agricultural land or land for construction, but it's the original place where the river was, so when the flood occurs, the water will return. The main canal in Zhengzhou City formed a natural wall, and when the flood happened, the flood water had to find a way out. So it rerouted and flooded into Zhengzhou City forcefully. Some scholars estimate that the approximate percentage of water taken from the Han River is 36%. In his book, Water, water expert Robin Clark points out that the more water is taken from the runoff, the bigger the problem it causes. According to the European experience, a ratio of less than 5% won't cause problems. A ratio of more than 20% will cause serious problems. 
China's Caixin.com reported in 2019 that several scholars pointed out that the water level of the Han River has dropped severely after the Central Line Transfer Project. Water pollution has increased, and aquatic fish may have decreased significantly. Many more scholars believe that the transfer of water from the south to the north may lead to a greater backflow of salty tides into the Yangtze River, thus affecting the quality of Shanghai's drinking water and causing a water crisis. In February 2019, the former vice minister of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development of China published a signed article in a professional magazine, Water Supply and Drainage, in which he wrote. As the scale of water diversion increases, at the same time, in some places, the difference in composition between the transferred water and the local water has led to the dissolution of scale in the tap water pipeline, resulting in new pollution, which is quite difficult to control. Therefore, the model of long-distance water transfer to solve water shortage has been in trouble to some extent. Four months later, the official was removed from his post. How long can the troubled South to North water transfer project last? In 2014, an online commentary by an American physicist argued that in a few years' time, sedimentation alone would be enough to scrap the world's mega project. He wrote that the South to North water transfer project was a complete failure and a bad idea. In the project's demonstration and implementation, no sediment experts were involved. Because the experts knew that the sediment problem couldn't be solved, he used a video to prove his point. It's not an exaggeration to say that this project, with an investment of 77 billion U.S. dollars, is a disaster. In November 2019, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang hosted a meeting on the follow-up work of the South to North water transfer project. This sparked concern among analysts who asked, "What follow-up work is needed for this project?" The CCP finishes the main project of water transfer first, leaving many problems, including pollution control, for the future. Later, more and bigger projects are needed to remedy the problems. Along with this, China's economic environment is deteriorating. This project has not only left a huge debt burden, but will also require a lot of money to maintain and repair in the future. Some may argue that if the water shortage in the northern cities is remedied by this project, then to a certain extent, it's also meaningful. Let's consider a simple example. The biggest drive to launch this project was because the CCP claimed that Beijing was experiencing water shortages. Currently, one billion cubic meters of water is transferred from the south to Beijing every year. Ancient Chinese scientists looked up to the sky to observe astronomy and down to survey geography and developed feng shui. In the eyes of the ancient Chinese, Beijing had one of the best feng shui in the country. It has almost continually been the capital for the last 700 years and the capital of six ancient dynasties. How could it lack water? There are five major rivers flowing through Beijing, among which the Yongding River was the largest source of water for Beijing. After the CCP established its regime in 1949, more than 500 reservoirs were built on the Yongding River, causing it to be 90% depleted and eventually declared unfit for drinking. Some scholars believe that if the Yongding River was revitalized to its natural ecology and flow, and water pollution in the basin was treated. Beijing wouldn't be short of 1 billion or 1.5 billion cubic meters of water. Red China has built nearly 100,000 reservoirs and dams in 70 years, the hazards of which we have analyzed in previous videos. The link to the video is posted in the description box below. The core theory of Chinese feng shui is to honor the unity of heaven, earth, and man. Human behavior should be in accordance with the context and direction of the great mountains and rivers. Human beings cannot disrupt this grand and delicate arrangement of nature, let alone create opposition. The rivers are the bloodline of the earth, and to cut them off leaves the earth ill. The blockage of the patient's blood vessels becomes more and more serious, eventually forming heart attacks and brain attacks, resulting in death. In feng shui, there are also the five elements of nature: metal, wood, water, fire, and earth. The attribute of southern China is fire, so there is a lot of water, and water is used to balance the fire. The north is the opposite. 
The South to North water transfer project disrupted this balanced circulation system. As a radical destroyer of traditional Chinese culture, the CCP has no respect or conservation for nature. Slogans such as let the mountains bow, let the rivers yield, and dare to change the sun and moon into a new sky were popular slogans in China in the 1950s and 1960s. Although in recent years, the CCP has transformed its warlike slogans into seemingly humanistic and poetic language. The underlying belief that mankind will prevail over nature and destiny has never changed. On September 28, 2020, China South to North Water Diversion Corporation Limited was established, which is 100% owned by the State Council of China. When China's media outlet Sina.com reported the establishment of the company, it was clearly mentioned that China is facing economic downward pressure and needed to boost investment, increase employment, etc. Therefore, the South to North Water Transfer Project in China has a new honor the happiness project of Chinese people. Surrounded by this kind of propaganda, it's difficult for the Chinese people to know the price they are paying for this happiness.